what's what's the impact of losing a guy like Carter for the season? And you know, I know he's he's still around to be a leader and to give guys advice, but still, what he brings to you guys in the field. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, he's been our starting left tackle for 19, 20, 21, you know, three and a half years, and uh, you know, as a team captain, and certainly that piece of it doesn't go away. But yeah, it's it's a uh, it, it certainly hurts. I know he's he's disappointed. I'm disappointed, but. Uh, you know, we take the next man up mentality. So, uh, you know, it's been that way for a couple of weeks while he was uh, trying to rehab an ankle and, uh, and then had the MRI on the knee. So, you know, those, those tackles, Branson Taylor and Matt Consalvis and Gabe Hoy have filled in uh, admirably well, yes. How tight is that competition to be the next man at that position? Well, you know, for me, it's, you know, it's, it's tight. Uh, Gabe hasn't really been you know, he was working his way back in. So, you know, each game we gave him a little bit more. The first game he came back, he was on a he was on a 15, uh, 15 play count. And as soon as he hit 15, I pulled him out. The next week, I think he took 52. Uh, last week, he got uh, he he took uh, 25. You know, but you know, obviously was a starter a year ago. So as soon as he's ready full time, I want to get him back in the lineup and. And really, uh, you know, between uh, between Branson and Matt, I mean, those guys have played uh, fairly well for us. And then, you know, I've got Ryan Bear waiting in the wings. So, uh, you know, the competition is the competition is, is is tight, and it's really good. And uh, you know, those kids uh, those kids get after it every day in practice. Why did Gabe go from 52 to 25? Well, he felt like his 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 uh, Achilles was getting a little tight, and I didn't want to chance it, so we pulled him out. What makes Carter a good prospect for the NFL? Well, he's you know obviously big. He's fast. He's got he's got great feet. Uh, he's got great work ethic. He's extremely smart, and uh, and he's dependable. And those are all really good qualities for us and uh, and at the next level. Carter on the sideline, Owen on the sideline, two veteran guys who've played a lot. Can those guys do? Those guys interact with the players when they come off the field in the middle of a game to encourage them to to try and offer a little coaching or you just want to be the one voice out there? Well, you know, when we get together, uh, when we get together in between series, those guys are there. And then truthfully, after that, I'm, I don't know what they do. Um, and I'm sure that I'm sure they do. But, you know, I've, I've got to move on and, and, you know, uh, talk to Sig and, you know, we'll talk about the next series. So uh, when we're together, those guys, those guys are right there. So what, thank you. What did Branson show you in, in, the, in the two games he started? Well, he's he's been you know for a young player he's been you know he's been very composed. You know we knew and we have known that he's a and that's why we recruited him. He's a talented guy and he's he's really developed uh, very nicely. I mean, kind of right on schedule for what I thought he would uh, become. And I think the the biggest thing that's impressed me has been his composure. Uh, you know, as a starter and his composure on the sideline and being able to tell me, you know, what's happening out there to him. And um, to me, that's that's been a huge factor. When you, when you guys are, are, are able to, I know next man up is a phrase and everyone says it because it's real, but it's still different for the offensive line when you see next man up because you're right next to each other. You're all five of you are in lockstep with each other when, they, when they're playing. But Yet, even with that, with all the backups you guys had against Virginia Tech, the historic day you guys have, you're combinating on a lot of these run blocks in different situations. What goes into guys who weren't playing that can just fill in and feel off their, 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 their teammate right next to them and know when to team up in those situations? Well, you know, I think, number one, it starts off the field. You know, the, these kids, these guys come in here every Tuesday and Wednesday night and... Uh, um, you know, in, in, I tell you what's happened in the past. That's been a that's been a player-led meeting, and I might have mentioned this last time I talked to you guys. You know, they've kind of one night. Uh, it was before Tennessee. I happened to be in there, and um, you know, it was like, Coach, we'll be back tomorrow. You know, and I kind of ran the meeting, and I didn't really want to go down that path, but I did for probably the next two weeks, and I'm going to do it tonight when they come in. Last last uh, the two, the Tuesday before the Virginia Tech game, I said, Listen. I want you guys to watch this, 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 and this, okay? If you have any questions, come see me. And uh, so they came in here, and I, wanted, I want it to be player-led, you know, because I think the player-led teams, player-led units are the strongest units. And so I'm gravitating it back to, back to that for them. 
But it really starts, you know, on those nights when they come in and watch tape together. And then it carries over on the field. I mean, those guys are always helping uh, coach each other and, uh, you know, and are always very in tune with what I have to say. Um, so I don't, you know, do you miss something there? I mean, yeah, you know, Carter and Marcus have started together for two years, but, uh, you know, and Branson, Branson's starting next to Marcus Minor, who's a veteran player. Uh, Blake Zabovic is really a veteran player, and, but, and Consolvis is too. Uh, and certainly Gabe is. So uh, I don't think it's really, honestly, I don't think it's that difficult. I, I think there's a lot that goes into it, and I really don't think about it too much uh, because it seems to take care of itself. Well, the way that you talk about how you know players leading meet meetings, it's a lot how you talk about how Jimmy Morris, he stepped up you know, in that room you know, years ago when he was part of this team. Or do you see guys that have taken that kind of initiative, how Jimmy stepped up as a leader for your group? Well, yeah, I mean, Jim was the guy who started all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got here in 18, he would come up watch tape with me. He, then he started to bring Owen Drexel in. And then, uh, you know, then it was Jake Cradle and the Gabe Hoys and the Carter Warns. And, you know, he would bring those guys in. And, and it was like, hey, fellas, you know, Jim, it's your meeting. Okay, I'm next door. If you guys need me, you know, holler. And, uh, and they would. Um, and, and Jimmy w really was the, uh, was the lead dog on that. And then that torch was passed to Owen, and now it's been passed, you know, still Owen and, and Jake and Gabe and, and, uh, and had been Carter, certainly. So, yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, my, the, the thing that bothers me a little bit is we, you know, we have night classes here. So some of the younger players can't come to that on Tuesday and Wednesday night. Um, so we'll have to, you know, we'll have to start that all over with them as they get, uh, as, as they progress through their academic career, we're able to, to get them, you know, when they don't have a night class, they can get up here on a Tuesday. So sorry for the long answer. That was great. Uh, Pat yeah. said yesterday that Louisville runs a lot of three, four um, looks. It, how much of a challenge is that for the defense as a whole, or for the offensive line as a whole, but particularly for Jake? Um, trying to make the calls and things that he needs to see out of an odd man front. Like well, I mean, really, West Virginia played, they were a 3-4, a, a they played 3-4 concepts. Uh, Tennessee played 3-4 concepts. The the touchdown, 76-yard touchdown that we hit uh, against, or however far it went against Tennessee, they were in, they were playing three down, and Owen just did the kind of the center nose guard dance, and, you know, and there goes Izzy. Uh, but, you know, uh, so it's not like we haven't seen it. Um, but it is challenging. It's a little easier when you're when you're the center and you're uncovered than when you are covered. And I, I think I think this defense is this is probably the best Louisville defense I've seen. You know, even from the time when I was there, and we had some pretty good defenses there. These guys are, you know, they're I think particularly the, the nose guards are both impressive guys, and they're they're very active. But overall, their their defenses they're fast, they're strong, they know where to fit. And uh, it's good, and they can rush the passer, so it's it's going to be a tremendous challenge for us. For as much shuffling as there has been on your line, Marcus has kind of been that anchor all year. I mean, how impressed are you with not just his consistency, but how he's able to kind of get the rest of those guys acclimated and you know settled in? Well, he's about forty years old, so you know he's <laughs> he can coach them. He actually uh, had some words to say to them after practice, you know, in a in a positive vein about what we can do. I didn't stay around to listen to it, but. Uh, I caught part of it as I walked away, but no, he's been uh, he's been a very good leader for us, and um, uh, you know I think he's he's taken a lot of those younger guys under his wing, and and you know that's really who he is off the field as well, and he's done a great job for us that way.